All right, so I'm going to use my kickoff template that I've been using about three or four builds now. Um, this just helps me scaffold this stuff out quicker so you guys can absorb the most realistic uh, content that you need as opposed to me just configuring a bunch of shit and you having to sit through that. Um, most of it's trivial, but it is some stuff that we'll use throughout uh, like Bulma and um, simple form and stuff like that that we use for forms. So you just you see in this template file, which we're going to pass when we create our file, that will basically just extend and add these gems for, to our, our application. We'll give it a name and do all these configurations that would otherwise just be very manual things out of the gate. So this is just a way to you know speed that flow up. So I'll do that first to start, but definitely reference that on GitHub. I'll link to it in the project. But other than that, let's get going. I did create a giant readme of this, so there is a written format, by the way. So definitely check out the blog or what will be the final repo for this. Right now, I just have a demo one up for my own purposes. I kind of like to log all my steps along the way just so I can teach better and show you guys exactly what it is I did. We might do things a little bit differently since we're going to be using Webpacker. I may install that out of the gate, but I, I think I might not just so I can, you know, sync up with my written form. So other than that, let's get started. And I'll leave these windows open just in case we need to reference some stuff. I'm going to go to my main working directory on this system. It's just WebCrunch. I have an alias set up and you can, it's probably just, yeah, doc, in my documents. In this file, I have my kickoff folder. Um, it should be all caught up to date. Yeah, there's nothing new there. So we can just actually run our new app within this folder. You're free to pass in the folder path if you want to do it that way, but it's, I just prefer to do it this way. So we're going to actually kick things off with Rails new workout tracker. Pass an M and then template.rb. So when you create a new app, you can pass in tons of new flags that you might want to like just say no to certain things like tests or whatever. I'm just going to forgo that for now, but definitely look that up. If you don't want to have all the, the junk that comes with it, it's just something you can configure. Like if you don't want to use coffee script, you can actually pass in no coffee script, I think, and it will use regular JS instead, stuff like that. It's kind of a nice, nice to have uh, feature of scaffolding out a new app. So for now I'll just, keep it simple and forget that. So let's just run this and it's going to use our template within this folder. So there is a template.rb file within there and then it's going to run this Rails new app kind of scenario. Uh, by the way, I'm on Rails 5.2, I believe. Yeah. And I think the latest version of Ruby. So you'll see that in the gem file, I believe. So I'll run this and we'll get rolling. Along the way, it will ask you what you want to call the app. So I'm going to call it uh, Workout Tracker. And then it'll do some configurations. Okay, great. So I'm going to open this in my Finder just because I like to visually move this over. Here's our Workout Tracker app, and all my crazy apps are in this folder. So I'll just leave that as is, and then it's going to be called workout tracker. So we'll actually CD out of this back and then we could just type workout tracker. It should auto complete. There we go. And so then we have our app file in here or app complete app. So I'll open this in sublime and I have my other old demo project open as usual in a different desktop. So I'll be probably panning back and forth, but just, if you're ever confused, look for the folder name. I use demo in front of the one that I've already built and the current one is just without demo. So this is the one we'll be working in. For this app, we will be adding some more gems to the mix. Uh, I'll probably refer to our first one just to use the ones we've got. So we've got Bulma, uh, Simple Form, Sidekick, all those are already installed. The two that we're gonna add are these. So Apartment and Webpacker. Webpacker comes with a new version that's linked to GitHub, the master branch. And I had some issues with that running this. So definitely check out 
the actual official ver version instead. Um, it should work better for you and you shouldn't run into any errors. Uh, that's just kind of a side note there. So with that installed, we need to actually install those using bundle. So we'll just run bundle. All right, so those should be in our project now. So we can actually run the server just to make sure that something's up. It looks like I might be already running a server. Fine, config webpack. Oh, okay, we need to actually set up webpack first. So let's do that. Uh, we'll go to the webpacker gym. Okay, yeah, we need to run webpacker install and then colon view. So this is on the webpacker gym GitHub if you wanna check it out. I also have it here. So I believe this is what's causing the errors. We'll run that just to get it installed. Um, this is gonna check. Oh, we need to actually run webpacker install first instead of view. So let's do that. There we go. It's gonna get a bunch of node modules and stuff that we need for all the JavaScript fanciness. So might take a minute depending on your system. So just kind of be patient, but should install what we need. And I think we'll be set. Okay, so while we're at it, I'm gonna add some actual uh, resources with yarn. Yarn is installed when you do run that. So you can do yarn add view resource. We're gonna use these later when we get to the views, but I just wanna set up the project. So this should add it there. And we'll continue that trend with yarn add, let's see, webpack. These might be optional, but I'm installing them because I had some errors otherwise. So feel free to not and see what you do, see what you think. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that though. There's one more that we'll add is the webpack dev server instance. So we'll do yarn and webpack dev server. And that should be it. So this is all just so we can run view. It's pretty nuts that we need that much dependencies, but it does make the difference. And you'll see in the interface how quick view is compared to just actually rendering regular HTML. Okay, so I think we can run Rails server now. It should boot up. There we go. Yep, there we go. Cool. Okay, so we have the apartment gym installed too. We need to do some initializ initialization there. Uh, let's go ahead and figure that out. So to run that, you can reference the readme on their site on the GitHub, but I'm going to do bundle exec Rails generate apartment install and that should create a initializer yeah there we go and inside that initializer let's go back to sublime there is some configuration we would need to do so config initializers apartment um, by default it's set up to use the sub subdomain that's what they call elevators and you can set those to be different or even have your own custom ones. For the sake of clarity and simpleness, we'll leave it as is, but we do want to config to extend or exclude models. And in our case, that's going to be user. So we want users to be scoped entire through the entire app as opposed to each subdomain. So you don't want to have to sign up on multiple places basically. And then we need to configure the tenant names. So here, Let's double check where that would be right here. We want to actually be plucking from the user, user model, and then there'll be a string, which we still need to create a subdomain on a user model. And that's basically when they sign up, they need to have a subdomain itself that they choose. So that's where, when I signed up in the first video, you saw me actually specify the subdomain. This is where it's plucking that from that instance. And then we need to actually add subdomain to the user model now. So let's do that real quick with a migration. So Rails generate migration. Hopefully you can see this. Uh, we'll call it add subdomain to users. 
and you could just say subdomain as the actual name of it and then string or if you want to just by default string is already it's suggested that it should always be a string you don't have to necessarily pass string but for brevity's sake I will so we'll generate that that will be in our database folder we could just verify it worked so there we go so to our user model we already have this granted because that we set that up doing the scaffold of the app uh, you might need to do this if you're not using my kickoff thing you will have to run the device initial install and it will do this the same way so with that done we can go to our migration here and then run uh, rake db migrate or rails db migrate and that should add it in our schema which i'll show you here yeah this is just saying we don't have any tenants yet so if you if you run into this it's okay um, we need to real really run rake db migrate again to get our tenants into place just kind of a, th a thing that apartment looks for so when you run migrations it does all those changes to each of the schemas so you have to think in terms of that global global addition that apartment looks into each database make sure those are matching up so each time you run rake db migrate I, I keep saying rake it's rails now it will migrate each of those in essence Okay, so with that done, we can go and configure our application controller to do a little bit of magic since we've got Devise as our user supplier. So let's go to app controllers. And we already permit a name, but I wanna permit the subdomain too as a um, permitted parameter. So we'll just pass in subdomain here. Great, so each time a person signs up, they can actually pass in these fields and Rails will know to just save those as opposed to just ditch them like it would if it didn't recognize what it was. So besides that, we need to config the middleware on the apartment gym, make sure it's doing what we want. Yeah, this line needs to definitely be uncommented if it isn't, so other than that, we should be in good shape there. Okay, so with that, we still need to add that field now to our, our registration. Uh, so you should have this folder already if you followed my kickoff template, um, but we'll wanna do new, and underneath, say, name, we'll have the subdomain, or e let's say email, and I'll just copy and paste this markup since it's already there, and we'll just call this subdomain. Then we can go and check out the app to run rail server. And if you go to sign up, you should see the new field now. We have subdomain there, so awesome. So those things are working. Uh, you can go ahead and create an account and just try it. it. Um, by default, no, nothing's gonna happen that makes apartment work and magically appear the way it should. We'll get into that the model structure and stuff next. That will probably wrap up this video. In the next video, we'll start getting some of the logic in order and then start making this thing look like a real app. So I will see you then.